What a beautiful fall day we have here in Johnson City, Tennessee. It's homecoming at ETSU and in Green Stadium. The Citadel Bulldogs invade, trying to continue on a path toward a potential Southern Conference title. It should be a knock them down, ground them out of fear between two teams that have a deep history of tight football. We're looking forward to it as we welcome you into our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. And hi, everybody, with Jared Singleton, Pete Kennedy with you. A couple of ball clubs that a month ago each were kind of in a different place, but here we are starting. In November, and the Citadel is one of six teams with a legitimate chance to win another Southern Conference title. It's kind of gone the other way for ETSU. Well, the Citadel is finally getting healthy now with Brandon Rainey at quarterback. He's getting more comfortable. He's kind of understanding how the offense is supposed to be ran, and he's getting some key players that's kind of helping him with that offensive production. The folks around the SOCON know when you take on the Citadel, you've got to stop an option offense. Rainey, the quarterback, the junior, is key to all that. He's already established a program record with 23 touchdowns accounted for this season. He's getting a lot of experience. He's getting a lot of help from a lot of guys on that offensive unit. He's done a fantastic job so far over the past month, as you said, as far as really understanding the game mentally and carrying out every Saturday now. Now, when ETSU has the ball, it's a ground-oriented attack led by Quay Holmes. He's their top rusher and among the national leaders in FCS and all-purpose yards. Quay Holmes is a big back, 6'1", 215-pound guy. He's really hard to get on the ground. He's really hard to try to get him down with just arm tackling. He's really been the workhorse for ETSU this season, and he's going to have to be that today. Citadel's in a great place as November begins. If they win out, they've got their third SOCON title since 2015. ETSU tries to get in the way of that. A year ago down in Charleston, the Bucks came away with a three-point victory. Will it be that close today? We'll find out when we come back to Johnson City and kick it off on a beautiful day for football, and we're excited about it. We're back after this. For 70. Yeah, you would think that, but this is definitely a big third down right here for Citadel. They need to get off of the field. Buccaneers on third downs, ninth in the SoCon, oh. and oh. Hussey, a bobbling grab and in stride with only Barrett to beat. And Hussey, who's been in the center of the spectacular in recent weeks for ETSU, has the Bucks on the board. So many big things on this particular play. Uh, Trey Mitchell does a great job. He takes a big hit, he sits in the pocket, throws, delivers a good ball, and Hussey does a great job of staying focused and dialed in, takes the ball in, and then he just lets his speed do the rest. Great job right there uh, by this ETSU offense. Great way to get this game started for homecoming. They're kind of getting away from who they are, but they're running a run-first football team, and they need to continue to be that way. Rainey was going to throw it for the first time today. Instead, he's got the first down in the ETSU territory, and a late flag is thrown in. Yeah, you can't tackle him like that, Pete. As you would expect him the national leaders in the FCS in rushing yards per game. Only 270 has them six. Third and goal from under center. Rainey, and he's across. And the Bulldogs, indeed, with that answer. Brandon Rainey, a rushing touchdown on the year for him, his 15th this season. Yeah, and you're going to see a lot of Brandon Rainey today. Halftime continues here in Johnson City, Tennessee at Green Stadium. And the ETSU Bucks trying to knock off the Citadel Bulldogs, a 13-10 lead for the home team here at the half on homecoming. We welcome you back in with Jared Singleton. Pete Hannity with you. Opening half, I think a big story is ETSU was able to contain that Citadel running game. And as a result, it kind of kept the Bulldogs offense out of center. Oh, definitely, Pete. And that ETSU defensive front has really taken on the challenge of creating havoc for that Citadel offense. And they've done just that. They've done a great job of creating penetration, creating second and long, uh, third and long situation for that Citadel offense. And that's just not what the Citadel offense is built for. Well, take a look at our opening half highlights and each team scoring the first time they had the ball. And a Bucks team that struggled to, first off, put points up, but also have some balance with the passing game. Well, they really did some good things right out of the game. It's been really interesting because we know so much about Quay Holmes, um, but they're getting a lot of production from their offensive, from the entire offensive unit, uh, from throwing the ball. Uh, they made a quarterback change uh, with Chance Thrasher, and he brought in a new element of being able to run the ball from the quarterback position. Uh, it's been a really good, I think personally, uh, a good half of football for ETSU, and hopefully they can carry that same momentum into the second half. You saw that 59-yard scoring toss from Mitchell to Huzzy for the opening touchdown. Of course, Quay Holmes, as we expected, doing some good things on the ground. The leading rusher so far in the game with 85 yards. The Bulldogs were able to score the first time they touched it. In fact, their past five games they've scored on their opening drive. And 
Well, their best play from scrimmage was that toss, the first catch this season for Rashad Riley, better than 30 yards from Brandon Rainey. And I think the Citadel offense in the second half, they're going to have to come back out, uh, getting back on schedule. They're not out of this game at all. Uh, they have to run the football really well on first and second down and try to keep this into a manageable third down so they can get points on the board. Cam and Joku thought he had a touchdown. No doubt right there on the only turnover in the opening half, the Destin Mack interception, but that did not lead to anything beyond that for the Citadel. Numbers through the first 30 minutes of play. You see total offense not all that far off, but again, I think that rushing category, the Bulldogs 106 yards in the opening half, but they're a team that can get you 300, 350 on the ground any time out. Easily, Pete. And I think the second half is going to come down to turnovers and making sure they don't have any Silly penalties uh, if you're the Citadel uh, offensive team, uh, offensive unit, and just the team in general. Uh, they're going to have to make sure that they play a very crisp second half to try to get the lead again and to try to get this victory because they still control their own destiny within the SOCON. And even though the Bulldogs have just one more penalty than the Bucks with three so far, those were three really critical offensive penalties in that second quarter that stunted a couple of Bulldogs drives. Second half action coming up from here in Johnson City. It's a beautiful day for football. It's another tight game between these two. And we've got the third quarter action for you when we return to Green Stadium after this on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. Reed also helping to bring down Holmes. Third and goal. Big third down play. Play clock under five. Mitchell firing, but oh, reeled in wow. for the touchdown. Wow. Back shoulder grab and a good one by Spagnoletti. Looked like it was going to be well beyond his reach. Well, not only that, Pete, he's looking back into the sun. I, I'm surprised. Sun and, you know, great job by putting the ball where only his guy could get it. That's a fantastic job right there. Uh, Trey Mitchell does a wonderful job by putting the ball in a position where only his guy can get the ball and just great adjustment mid-route by locating the ball, seeing it, getting it, and getting those feet down for a touchdown. You've got to have your, your, two, you know, your two wing backs or a tight end or, or wide receiver, whoever's out there, they have to really set that edge to allow that perimeter play to open up. Off the misdirection, nice pitch. Smith, Rouse to run, far sideline. 20, 15, oh. one man to beat and knocked out of bounds. Good catch of speed by Karan DeLintz, the junior cornerback out of Phoenix City, Alabama for ETSU. But here are the Bulldogs again knocking on the door. Blocking, he's able to do what he does best, and that's, you know, get first downs, get big plays. Great job by the Citadel offense. 49 yards, obviously the best running play of the day for the Bulldogs in terms of yards. That one feels pretty good as well. As Njoku gets into the end zone, he thought he had a TD catch in the second quarter, but here in the third, just like that, he scores to bring the Citadel right back. And saying, hey, we're going to run behind you, big fella, and put the game in this play on your shoulders. Second down and goal, an I formation tight set this time for the Bucks. There he is. Mitchell rolling, throwing, caught, touchdown. Great job. Jawan Martin, the fullback, out of the backfield. That's his third receiving touchdown this season. Seal off that edge and allows your, your running back to have a smooth transition as he gets from the backfield, hopefully to the perimeter. Loss of a yard in the play by Vollmer. So second down and 11. Just inside the ETSU 20. There he is. Throwing is Rainey oh. and a nice grab by Boomer reaching up, looking back in that sun. And it'll be first and goal. You kind of felt they were setting that play up, Pete, because it was the same formation. It was the same action in the backfield. Boomer 16 yards in that reception, his fifth catch of the season. Rainey, and he's in. Touchdown. We got ourselves a game, Pete. And three timeouts. Um, you know, you can kind of get down the field pretty quickly. So you're going to see a big sense of urgency right now by the center of the offense. Rainey, man, wide oh. open. It's Webb oh. in stride. Stays on his wow. feet. 15, wow. 10, 5. <laughs> and the team that lives on the run goes upstairs to get the advantage. Wow. <laughs> My goodness. The center of the coaches are going crazy right now in the booth. 73 yards. What a, what a catch. What a catch. What a huge play. I mean, just 
Oh my gosh, Pete, that was huge. Those two have gotten together on an 84-yard connection this year. But this is the biggest possession of the game. Can you get off of the field? We've had some fine ball games so far this season on our Ingalls SoCon Game of the Week. Pressure comes. Mitchell gets away from it. Husky oh! goes upstairs, and the 6'4 <laughs> receiver pulls in another fabulous grab. He's having a career day. Um, to call the bad throw. First and 20 just inside of the 35. Oh. Over the middle, caught in stride. Coffee that time tripped up and pushed out of bounds. And it'll be first and goal. That could be a very big factor. Again throwing toward the end zone. Knocked away. Nice job defensively that time. It looked like Aaron Reed. And actually, that was Destin Mack who had an interception earlier and the safety. For a second, I thought it was the linebacker Reed dropping back in coverage, but it's instead Mack. Just his second pass broken up this year. He forced the only turnover in our game to this point with that interception back in the opening half of play. If you said it was defense, can you stand for one play? Here it is. Fourth down and goal from the six for ETSU. Trying to get their first SOCON win of the year. Hurry up, four seconds. And throw it. Just about a dagger into Citadel's title hopes. Firing near the end zone. Caught, but stopped. They went to their leading receiver. Atkins pulled it in. Wow. But he is wrapped up by Barrett and crew and the Citadel Bulldogs. Defense holds when they need him most. It's the game of inches. They've got an open date next week to the Bulldogs. Their next two opponents are teams we saw go head to head in that overtime tussle last week in Spartanburg. Third down, Rainey. It'll bring up fourth down, so clock will wind. Rainey was simply trying to keep the play alive to put themselves in a situation where when the play clock resumes, they can. Let the game clock wind down. It is going to be a sore trip back to Charleston for number 16 <laughs> in the Bulldogs uniform. You see that stinger he took on the hard hit by Smith. And the Bulldogs achieve what they wanted to. And the final seconds will wind down And the Citadel Bulldogs. They didn't get the lead until late, but team known for its ground game. And, well, today they were able to put 229 yards of rushing offense up, but it was a 73-yard scoring strike from Rainey to Webb that gives them this tight victory in Johnson City, 31 to 27. They find a way to keep winning ball games, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Find a way to win and doing it the right way, and this little team is definitely doing that. Bulldogs winning for the 18th time in 28 games in this series. Brent Thompson, his ball club improves to six and four on the year and four and two in the Southern Conference. ETSU, well, they'll fall to two and seven and zero oh and six, and another just heartbreaking loss for this Bucks team. They got some great play out of a lot of folks today. Their running backs, Quay Holmes and Jacob Saylor, and also their wide receiver Will Huzzy, and a very solid ball game turned in by their quarterback Trey Mitchell. In the end, though, yet another close loss for these Bucks. So we say so long from here in Johnson City. We invite you to join us next week. We'll come to you from Cullowee, North Carolina on our Ingalls SOCON Game of the Week. A 3.30 kick for Western Carolina and ETSU rivals. Not too uh, far apart on the SOCON landscape. And we will have that showdown for you next week in Cullowee on many of these same stations at 3.30 p.m. So the Citadel Bulldogs, they still need some help, but they remain in line to control their own destiny toward potentially winning their third SOCON title since 2015. 31-27, our final score here in Johnson City, a four-point Bulldogs win over the Bucks of ETSU. On behalf of Jared Singleton and our fine crew here, Pete Kennedy saying so long, we'll see you next week.